So here is our pumpkin ball, all set and in pretty good shape. The top has been done by the flower method. The bottom I did for demonstration with the glue method. And looking right at them, there's very little difference in how they appear. The top has a little bit more of a uh, whitish motif on top of it, whitish patina from the flower, but realistically, they are equally pretty rock solid all the way throughout. So our next step is going to be to put a face on this thing. The face does not really matter at all. Have fun. Make what you want. I'm going to be making a happy face, a spooky face, and this thing. Here's my little guy. And the next thing we're going to be doing is mixing up some paper clay and applying that to him. There are a couple ways you can go about adding your paper clay. You can add the whole outer coating all at once, or you can kind of put on a shell. For this particular guy, I'm going to do what I like to do, and that is put a shell on the outside before I start doing any crazy textures. I kind of just like having the extra foam or I kind of just like having the extra strength on the outside and make sure that I'm at a point where if I wanted to, I could pull my beach ball out early. And having that initial shell around the whole outside also just makes me feel like I've got more room for error in case anything else happens. So onward and upward. Next step is to show you guys how to mix up some paper clay. Time to mix up some of the greatest substance on the planet for crafters, and that is paper clay, otherwise known as paper mache clay, otherwise known as that stuff, you know, that stuff over there. In my previous videos, I've advocated the use of cellulose insulation to be the paper fiber product, but let's face it, not everybody can get a hold of that. And this series is for somebody who's just giving this a try. So I'm gonna use a material that just about everybody's got in their homes, and that is some toilet paper. I will try to give you a link to my cheapest source of this stuff, as well as an absolute shout out to Joni over at Ultimate Paper Mache, from whom I relentlessly copied this recipe because, again, my stuff was hard to obtain, hard to come by, but she's got the thing that everybody has. But here we go. What we need to do is start by getting this toilet paper down to its constitu uh, constituent fibers. The way to do that is to just pour water on it. Easiest way. I used to pull this stuff off of the toilet paper by the bale, and uh, that takes forever. But if you just get the darn thing moist, this stuff will fall right apart as it's designed to. I'm not going to keep this cardboard tube in there because it'll take longer to get down to constituent paper. But if you're a crafty person, maybe you can put it back into shape, let it dry out, and use it for something. So here we have our paper. What we want to do is get this paper absolutely soakity soakity soaked. We need this to break down into pretty much paper pulp. And I usually just use a little bit of hand action, break it up, move it around. You can also soak it in warm water for a while. That'll also take care of the process. So you don't technically need to agitate it if you've got time, but I'm trying to zip through and get this done. <clears throat> through the magic of water, we've got this stuff down to kind of a oatmeal-like consistency here. And the water has enabled us to break it down very fast into its constituent fibers, but now we've got to get the water back out. I tend to mix up all my paper clay in a mixer, which is the one concession I am not going to make to doing it the rough way anymore. I have spent years doing this with hand mixers and drills and five gallon buckets with paint mixers, but sorry, I'm using my KitchenAid mixer. So, to get this stuff squeezed out, 
We need to draw the careful balance of getting rid of the water, but not getting rid of all the water. So first example, getting rid of too much water. Here we go. If you've done this to it, you squeeze it out too much water. Because the minute I try to mold it, it just sort of flakes apart and it doesn't really mold like clay. So if you get to that consistency, eh, you done done too much. Now let's do too little water. Yeah. All right, I've just barely knocked some water out of there. The downside is the getting it just perfect. Joni over at Ultimate Paper Mache has got a perfect calibration for it, really. And hers is that you get as much water out that you can still kind of push this thing around like you're sculpting it, and it will move with you. And that's a pretty good call. Uh, you will get a feel for it very rapidly, and it's just a matter of squeezing out, I would guess percentage-wise, about 80% of the water from that mush soaked with about 80 percent of it out if you need to put more water in you always can i consider this to be pretty good right here so i can kind of move around it's flaking a little bit but that's my pretty darn good for water emission and then put this stuff into whatever mixing container you're planning to use be it a bowl or a five gallon bucket because we've got to mix this up with the other ingredients. The mixing capacity can be done with a hand mixer. Don't even try it with a whisk, it'll be much too thick. You might be able to mix it with the other ingredients with one of the standard beaters, but like as not, you're gonna need a dough hook because this stuff is going to get very, very thick. These machines may well burn out because they just don't have the strength sometimes to whip through paper clay. So be very, very careful of that. The more preferable option for mixing is to dump all this stuff into a five gallon bucket Grab yourself a drill with a paint mixing attachment and mix it up that way. Otherwise, you're stuck mixing it by hand. And, well, I hope you're a nice young person with no arthritis and no hand cramping capacity because it's going to get bad. I'm going to extract the rest of the water from this and meet you on the other side. Eventually, you'll probably get down to a level where you've just got a lot of free-floating pulp and it can be very hard to grab it. At this point, I like to use a strainer, just a little metal mesh here. And this really helps me grab the last of my stuff without a problem. And then I just push the last stuff against the wall of the strainer. And it comes right out. Now, we have a container that is absolutely full of crumbled, partially soaked paper fibers. We're going to add three quarters of a cup of glue. While he's busy pontificating and screwing up the recipe a bit, the next step will involve adding one and three quarter cups of drywall joint compound per roll of toilet paper. This is kind of based loosely on a one toilet paper roll system. The toilet paper rolls will vary in the amount of actual paper pulp that's in them, but I'll try to give you some hints for clearing up any mistakes and problems that arise during that step. Now we're going to start the mixing process. Again, if you're using a hand mixer, you can try it with a beater. You'll probably end up needing a dough hook. Uh, if you're in the middle ground, I recommend, again, paint mixer on a drill if you're insane well then you get your own dedicated stand mixer the ingredients mixed up by themselves pretty much look like this a paper floof that's not too bad if you put your hand in it and pull it back out none of it sticks to you but we need to start adding some flour in here because in and of itself it's got a little bit too much moisture and 
Um, any cracks that appear in this mixture, if I started using it by itself, uh, would have nothing to fill in the gaps. There's no other tiny particulate in there, apart from arguably the drywall compound, to fill that in, which is why we're going to add some flour here to help smoothen it out and make sure that when we smooth this stuff down, it should leave us with a flat um, texture rather than uh, something that's full of tiny little cracklies. Oh, he's going to screw it all up again. And what you need to add during this step is one and a half cups of flour, not the idiot amount that this guy added, because he's a nut, but one and a half cups of flour. So ultimate recipe for this is one roll of toilet paper, one and three quarters cups of drywall joint compound, and one and a half cups of flour. Once again, be careful of your mixers. Don't want to lose a finger if things should re-engage. But your paper clay should look mostly whitish. It should stick to itself far more than it sticks to you, though sticking to you is also something that it will do. A good sign that you're pretty well set with your mix is the fact that the material will stick to itself far more than it does to the sides of whatever mixing container that you're working with. You are ready to go. Very common problems will include your clay being too wet. If it is, add some more flour. If your clay is too dry, add some more water. If your clay is sticking to you a lot, it's really, really tacky stuff, then go ahead and add more drywall joint compound. That hopefully should take care of any problems you might have with the clay recipe being off for whatever amount of toilet paper you're using. I'll see you in the next video when we put together the shell.